is if you if you are a new user and I hope we have some new users uh, in the audience basically you know when you when you go to finish uh, the neck you obviously say well I'm just gonna select you know the neck uh, surface and I'm going to machine it and I expect that to be totally machined but what you see in here and I'll do it right on an angle here is that the tool doesn't go all the way down and so users they wonder they scratch their heads and they they call and say why isn't that going all the way down so the the tip here is is that in Almost all of the three axis finishing operations, uh, the tool path is controlled by the, obviously the tip of the tool, uh, but the, the tool is projected down onto the surface that you're machining. And because you're constraining the tool path to the edge of this surface, when the tool rolls over the surface and the center line of the tool axis lines up with this edge, it stops. It's not going to continue on down. There's nothing down here to machine. If it did, it would plunge into your spoil board or it would retract. Or we, wouldn't, we wouldn't let it do that. It would, it would retract upward uh, automatically to your clearance plane. So, but obviously you don't want to just machine that. You want to obviously machine the whole thing. So what you can do uh, with that, and you'll find that you will do this technique for many, many different applications basically what we're going to do is just put a surface uh, under the part for to allow the tool to uh, drop down onto we call that a catch surface or catch plane so we're just going to go up here it's just a regular surface the dimensions doesn't doesn't matter it just need make sure it encompasses the entire part so we're just going to put a surface down there now that will catch it. Let's go ahead and regenerate it and see what we get. Let's go ahead and. Well, you're still going to get the same thing yeah. because you're con containing yep. uh, it to the center line. Yep. So you need, yeah. to, offset yeah, we need, that to, we need to create our offset curves next. Yeah. You're right. Okay. So here's another uh, interesting aspect of control boundaries. So basically, let's turn this off for now. Basically, uh, not only do you want the tool to get down to this plane, but we also need uh, to control it. How far out when it hits the plane uh, do you want to machine? So we, we show that in the guitar body where uh, we had the outer perimeter and then we offset the outer perimeter uh, by the tool uh, radius uh, to contain the tool uh, you know, outward in the X and Y direction. So what we're going to do here is we're going to create uh, some curves and let's just go to a multi-port layout here. Well, that'll work. We're going to create some curves from objects. And there's a number of different ways you can do that. Uh, you can do use the uh, uh, duplicate border, which is a good way. It'll only get, only get the perimeter border. Uh, you can also do a duplicate edge, which will put a curve on each one of the edges. I'm going to do duplicate edge because I want to show you the curve Boolean commands uh, in Rhino. That's a new feature they added. So let's go ahead and do duplicate, duplicate edge. And we're just going to window select uh, these. Uh, let's go ahead and window select all of them. OK, so now we got an edge uh, on each of the uh, edges of the surfaces and they're already selected. So what I'm going to do now is that you can you can join these now or you can just project them down. So while they're selected, I'm going to go ahead and project them down onto that plane. <clears throat> We're going to use the curve from curve objects, curve from objects, and then use the project command. We're going to pick our catch plane. So now you see we have curves on the plane that are selected. Okay, so we can go ahead and at this point, we're going to go use the curve boolean command. So curve, we're going to do curve edits, uh, curve edit tools, and we're going to use curve boolean. 
And what this is going to do is it's going to it's it's a good way of uh, merging and trimming uh, curves uh, in a particular area. Uh, as you might know, if you got a little bit of experience working with uh, trying to create control boundaries, you end up with curves on top of curves or curve segments on top of curves. You may end up with curves not being merged or curves not touching each other. So there's all kinds of things that can cause a problem when you go uh, to using those curves for machining. So with the curve boolean, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to select curve boolean and I don't want to isolate it in any areas. I want to isolate it on the outside. So I'm just going to pick, it's asking you to pick the regions that you want to keep. Well, I want to keep the outer region, so I'm just going to pick out here. So you'll see, let's go ahead and pick enter, that it created a curve on the outer boundary. Uh, it, it didn't mess with the inner curves, it just selected the outer boundary as a single curve, and then we're going to go ahead and, and merge that just in case it wasn't merged before. So now what we're going to do in our finishing operation, we're going to change the control boundaries. We'll get rid of those. Do you want to offset that first? Oh, yeah, yeah, right. Yeah, let's go ahead and offset that. We'll select our curve. So once we get the uh, curve boundaries, uh, he's going to offset it by tool radius or, or a little more than tool radius. So the tool has enough uh, room mm -hmm. uh, to go down to the edge of that surface. So it's important to do the offset. Mm -hmm. So let's set the distance to five. That should be enough. Okay, so you see I got an offset curve. Now, another point to, to to a recommendation for the curve boolean is that it will ensure that you have a single curve, continuous curve. Uh, if you don't, you know, when you go to offset it, you're going to have some weird things going on. You want to have a really nice uh, offset curve. As you can see, uh, the curve turned out, uh, the offset curve turned out very nicely. There's no irregularities in it whatsoever. So we're going to use the offset curve in the operation itself. So actually the curve boolean will create a single continuous closed curve. It's not going to create an open curve. So that's why it's highly recommended yep. uh, you mm -hmm. use that curve boolean command. Okay, so we picked the outer boundary. Let's go ahead and generate that. It still didn't go down there for some reason. Let's see why it didn't. <clears throat> okay, so I have my surfaces selected. Let's remove all those. Sorry about that. Okay, get rid of those. We have our single region. Let's generate that. Okay, so what you see now is that the tool went all the way down to our catch plane and then out to our boundary. We had left a little bit area. You can tighten up that offset to get that exactly at uh, the catch plane. So that's a good, uh, I mean, you're going to, that's a basic understanding of a basic technique that you need to know basically for when you go to machine anything in three axis, um, uh, anything that you select is a containment area. I mean, the, the surfaces themselves are going to be machined uh, as, as long as they're visible uh, because the tool paths are projected down onto the surface. Uh, but there's another thing I wanted to show you here too. You see that the tool is coming down to the end and it's dropping. Now, we probably don't machine need to machine this outer edge. Let's just turn that off because this probably extend the stock probably extends further out. Uh, but you know you don't want to drop down the edge, and you may not want to drop down this edge uh, either because it might uh, you know deform this edge that you want a nice clean cut along there. So what you can do there is we're just going to add a couple of extra surfaces. So we're going to do a uh, surface mm -hmm. extrude straight. Oops. Just select the curve. Yeah, I will. So for direction, 
I'm just going to go pick two points down here. And I'm just going to drag this over uh, for the top of it. And again, I got to flip this over. Okay, so we got one on the top. And we're going to put a couple real quick. We're going to put a couple uh, on the sides. So, Don, can you slow that down so mm -hmm. people can see what you're yep. doing? Yep. So let's go ahead and escape out of that. So what I want to do now is I want to put a surface out this way along this edge. And we down here, we go ahead and do, do both of them at the same time since they both go in the same direction. So we're going to go ahead, and you can pre-select these edges uh, if you want. Okay, so we got those two curves selected. We're going to go to Surface, Extrude, Straight. And um, looks like it dropped the surfaces, curves. And now you see that it's extruding. So we don't want it to go in the z-axis. We want to change the direction. So we're going to select direction from the control prompt. And we're going to tell it the direction by picking two points. So you see now that it goes uh, this way. So we only need this to go over just a little bit. We're just going to do it right there. Uh, and then we're going to do the same thing uh, over here. Direction. Over here like that. Okay. So basically what we did um, in about, you know, 30 to 45 minutes, just, just I mean, seconds, it just take you that long to add a number of uh, catch planes there. So now let's regenerate this. And you'll see, the, obviously, that the toolpath is going to stop on this surface. So it keeps it away from the back stock here on the back. It keeps it from dropping uh, on the sides and uh, uh, messing up this nice sharp edge that you got there, uh, same as on the other side. Is there any questions on this technique? Because this is a very fundamental uh, technique. You're going to use this over and over again when you uh, anytime you do a three-axis uh, toolpath, most cases you will. I mean, you may not use it all the time, but in most cases you will want to use uh, A, an offset curve, and B, some catch surfaces. So you want to have total control of where that tool is going to go uh, when it's projected down onto the part surface. So it projects it down to the part surface as well as your catch surfaces that you're using for containment. Any questions on that? Yeah, I also want to reiterate, these are very important modeling techniques you're going to be using, uh, especially when you want to protect uh, edges, like Don was saying, in that particular area where the, in the back of the neck, uh, you want to protect that edge uh, from being uh, machined. Uh, mm -hmm. Then you want to add some additional surfaces uh, to protect those edges. So uh, it's important to understand the principles here. Okay. I'm going to show another part that's uh, actually uses that technique as well. Let's go over to uh, this part here. Mm -hmm. And uh, this was submitted by Terry. Terry, I know you're in the audience. I appreciate the parts. Um, uh, they're very, very good for uh, teaching new users how uh, to machine um, pre cut blanks. Uh, how to contain those uh, machining tool paths, only machine uh, the areas that you want to machine. So let's take a look at Terry's part. Uh, and also, I have a um, I have a picture to show you what that blank looks like. Let me drag this over. Okay, so here's our pre-cut blank. Um, it's got a piece of uh, separate uh, laminated wood on the top and also your stock wood uh, on the bottom. So this will be the full uh, um, neck per se. And I'm going to show you what this part, this is actually a dulcimer. So it's, it's not sticking out past the neck, past the body like a guitar. And I'll show you a picture of that in a moment. Uh, it's actually runs the whole length uh, of the instrument. And what uh, we're machining here is what's called the strum hollow. So uh, the user actually holds this uh, instrument on their 
uh, lap. They're sitting down and holding it on their lap, and they're playing this with two hands, uh, uh, the frets over here and the strumming uh, over here. So what I wanted to show you in the uh, machine, the machine toolpath is Terry is using two sets of boundaries here. The one set is highlighted. You'll see that they're, they're on the XY plane and they're overset with the uh, offset with each other. So you got one on this side and you got one on this side that overlap uh, in the middle. So let's show that other side so that it contains uh, the rough and he's using, what's an interesting technique here is he's using finishing uh, as a roughing. So he's using parallel finishing and he's leaving stock uh, to be machined at, on another operation for the actual uh, finishing. And you also see that he's using these additional surfaces here to push that tool path up uh, and over uh, this area. Well, you, just, you don't want the tool path to go continue on in. Uh, this is a laminated stock here that continues all the way down. So it just, you know, helps keep it uh, and goes, makes it go up over that area. Let's go ahead and look at, so we've got roughing uh, for each side. So Don, can you, can you show the multiple, uh, the stock setting as well as the multiple G level setting in the barrel yep. finishing? So, and this is a good, uh, one to look at for that case. You see that we have a level right here, okay? And that's leaving some stock here for the finishing operation. So let's go ahead and look at this. So for the cut parameters, he's leaving uh, 0 0.1, 10 thousandths or 100 thousandths, excuse me, of stock remaining uh, on the part. And you also see that he, Harry has added a catch surface here on the end. You see this in red. So the tool, when it, uh, tool path, when it's calculated, it'll go cleanly across this edge as if that edge were a parting line and uh, it's going to be mating uh, with another part. So you want that uh, nice clean cut off of there. So let's look at the Z containment. So basically, uh, Terry has set a, a bottom Z, the lowest, uh, it's just at zero. So there's really no containment there. But here he's using the multiple step downs. So if you look at this picture right here uh, in the dialogue, uh, you can set uh, the finishing. You can use it as a roughing and you can add multiple step downs as if it was a horizontal roughing. So uh, Terry has one level and two levels defined. So you have your main level at the top and then your second level uh, uh, at the bottom. And let's go ahead and look through the, the finishing operations as well. And again, Terry is using the same control uh, boundaries for the finishing, both sides. And then on the front, you'll see that it continues on past the catch plane or catch surface here uh, on the end. And also it keeps it off of this uh, laminated area. And this is what it looks like uh, after the simulation. And I also have a, a better image of that uh, close up completed. Let's go ahead and show you that. So here's what it looks like uh, after it's machined. The tool pass were kept away from the laminated top edge on both areas here. And then also the catch surface on the end, um, you know, allowed you for a nice crisp edge uh, here, cutting edge on the end of the part. And then also for if you want to see what this looks like, being uh, played. So you've got, you got your fretboard here, and then you got, in this particular one, you got one strum hollow here, uh, and then uh, the end part right here that's mating up. Uh, Terry, excuse me if I don't know all the, all the terminology for the components, but uh, I think the user gets the idea of what we're talking about. Okay. Now we want to get to inlays while we still have some time. So let's go ahead and we're going to look at 